Good morning. <clears throat> uh, my name is Mami Kadelka from uh, Moriart Museum. And um, I cannot perform, I cannot talk, or I cannot dance. Just a very simple uh, curator's talk. But I wanted to talk about uh, a small series of uh, the exhibitions that I initiated at the museum in uh, 2015 called uh, Mum Research. Um, when uh, the museum opened in 2003, then uh, the Moriart Museum is on the top floor of this uh, high building, uh, 53 stories high. Then uh, we have a lot, lots of people coming, and so um, uh, maybe thousand or two thousand per day. So uh, the, my uh, uh, challenge is how can we talk about contemporary art, and when when we talk about uh, Asia, uh, to the much broader people, and as you know that Asia is not small, so. Uh, um, we had been doing this sort of uh, so-called regional exhibitions called uh, uh, the one was uh, Follow Me, Chinese Art at the Threshold of the New Millennium in 2005. And in 2008, we did uh, Chalo India, A New Era of Indian Art. And in 2012, we did Arab Express, the latest art from the Arab world. And then I'm now preparing this quite major uh, survey show of Southeast Asian art from 1980s to now uh, called San Shawar. And that will be uh, uh, co-organized by the National Art Center Tokyo, Mori Art Museum, and the Japan Foundation uh, to start from July next year. So uh, for this, uh, for this, oops, what did I do? Okay, uh, for this show, uh, we have this website, uh, C Project. Then we had been uh, traveling uh, 16 cities in 10 countries in the last 18 months. So uh, after all these, uh, uh, researches and then also uh, uh, the execution of the exhibitions, um, I always had this um, question to myself, how can we tell the very different stories from very different contexts or the works being created in a specific time and the places in depth to the broader audience? And then also we had been meeting so many important small, medium scale collectives and art spaces in the regions, as well as important art movements in Asia. But uh, you also need to tell uh, the stories to the uh, wider audience who are not necessarily uh, engaged or have knowledge about uh, the different parts of Asia. So uh, I initiated this uh, series MUM research. We uh, had a small renovation in uh, early 2015. So uh, instead of just having a major show, uh, we could have uh, three small rooms for different smaller projects in addition to the main exhibition at the museum. So one space uh, we dedicated for the MUM research to uh, this uh, kind of small but very intense uh, display of the uh, the documents, videos, and photographs, and text, not only of, or far more documents or contextualized materials rather than uh, work itself. So uh, the first one, we uh, worked with the uh, Parasite in Hong Kong because they did this great show called The Great Crescent Art and Agitation in the 1960s, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan. So we sort of incorporated the model into this framework of MAM Research Number 1, and uh, but added uh, sort of uh, quite a lot of a Jap Japanese element, and then also uh, additional uh, material from Korea Research uh, Institute, uh, by the, uh, the professor Mi Gyon Kim and Kuroda Laiji from uh, the Japan. And uh, so the exhibition space is something like this. It's not so big, but uh, visually quite uh, 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 clear to be able to speak to the general public. And then uh, a lot of a uh, timeline and lots of text. I love timeline. So uh, um, the Japan, Korea, timeline, uh, the Taiwan. Then uh, starting to see this how that after the war, because both Korea and Taiwan was under the occupation of Japan for quite a long time, from 35 or to 50 years. Then uh, what happened to these three countries? They became a kind of like a guard for uh, political. Uh, guard for the United States in a Cold War time, so it's called the uh, Great Crescent. Then, um, 
So always uh, start with the map and then uh, historical context and social political context. And along with these, uh, uh, I wanted to have a point. Uh, oh, yes, yes. So these are the additional information of the Japanese uh, anti-art performance movement, which was concentrated in the 60s. And uh, so it was not only Tokyo, but throughout the nation. Then, uh, so the display was this kind of... Uh, uh, the graphical, um, the, the design, then um, um, some of the, uh, the moving images with, uh, this was example of a zero dimension from Japan from 1960 to, uh, to uh, the, around 1970 uh, with some uh, documentation uh, images from uh, their performances. And then also, uh, Zero Dimension was a very successful being in a sort of uh, captured by the general uh, magazine, not by the, they, they were not really featured in uh, art context or art magazines, but more for the graph magazine or generic magazine. So they, they knew that they were using these magazines uh, to, uh, uh, to broadcast sort of their activities throughout the nation. And uh, so we showed all these, um, um, the, for instance, this was sort of a women's magazine, but saying, what is underground? So that was a time not only for the anti-art uh, performance movement, but also underground uh, anti-authority uh, movement in the, uh, the, entire, the entire nation. So uh, these are some of the examples of the magazine pages, not art, but the general art, general magazine. Um, and then also we wanted to show this uh, group of uh, different anti-art uh, performance collectives in 50s and 70s in Japan. And uh, it was the massive wave throughout the nation from Tokyo to Fukuoka, uh, Kobe and Kita Kyushu. So there was a very interesting time to see how um, Japan was uh, uh, having this sort of growing wave of these movements. And then that was actually first time for a Japanese audience also to encounter these uh, similar movements in Korea and uh, Taiwan around the same time. So, um, and then we were uh, very um, lucky to have Mr. Uh, Yoshihiro Kato, who was a leader of Zero Dimension, and together with uh, Kuro Dalaiji. And uh, so he came out and he gave a talk uh, from the, his experience in the 60s, but also he, how he continued his uh, practices uh, throughout the, uh, the few decades. So uh, it, it was, um, he's like a legendary man, and it was a very emotional, but also very sort of stimulated moment for, to, for the museum to have him, and then uh, meet all these the curators at, at the same time. Then uh, afterwards, we focused on a Filipino artist called Robert Chabet, who uh, passed away already. But he was a very important figure uh, to look at the development of contemporary art in the Philippines. He was a very important artist in the Philippines, but less known outside of the country. So I worked with Ringo Bunuan, who was a researcher at the Asian Art Archive in Hong Kong, who did all the archivings of uh, the Chabet uh, and documents and photographs and works. So uh, there was a group of artists who had helped this archive to uh, to be stored in uh, Asian archi art archive. But I, I want also wanted to transform that archival materials into the exhibition format. And Robel Chabet lived from 1973 to 2013, and it's very interesting to see how he lived as an artist, but also curator, and then also the, the leader of the artist run space, Shop 6, and also taught long time at the University of Philippines as a, as a professor. Then uh, I, I started to meet all these younger generation artists uh, who talked about him, and I never met him, but I, I just wanted to see who he was, so uh, who was the Robert Chabet became the uh, exhibition title. Then, uh, so again, starting from the map, and then him as uh, the, his life, and he, he's an, an artist and curator, and then also how the Philippines was going through the uh, new uh, post-war time. 
Then, uh, so uh, we started from this uh, nice portrait of the Chabet. Then uh, exhibition space is more sort of a little bit colorful so that it doesn't look like too much of the document. But uh, all this very intense text and people are like, wow, we cannot read that much. But uh, <laughs> I knew it, but we intentionally did it. And it's interesting to see how he was doing all these activities at the same time. And in 1967, he was appointed as the first uh, museum director for the new Philippine Culture Center, which was initiated by the uh, Imelda Marcos. And then he had this grant from a Rockefeller Foundation to uh, travel through uh, America, Mexico, and the European uh, museums. And then he came, he was only late 20s. And then he came back, and in 69, he started as director. And then he left the position within a year, but he still continued as an, an curator. And in 1970, he even came to Japan for the 1970 Osaka Expo to, uh, uh, to, to be a curator for the, uh, the Philippine uh, Pavilion. And he also initiated the important uh, award, uh, CCP 13 Artist Award from 1970, which is still uh, going on as an important uh, premier uh, award for the young artist. He even designs the poster for the theater products and uh, production. And these are some letters from Rockefeller Foundation recommended him to visit uh, Milano Torinale, Venice Biennale, and Casa Documenta in 1968. So uh, this is so important to see in life and then to sort of activate the history and fragments of the history. And then we collected all these different time of his portrait and all pictures and also some of the re relationship with the, uh, the email of Marcos as well. Because the art and culture was sort of uh, important for the Marcos regime uh, to be a symbol of uh, internationalization and modernization of the country. And uh, so we just run through, uh, oh, there was an album of him very early time because he was uh, trained as an architect. So there was a very early um, architecture drawing of him for the kindergarten. And then so he, the, you can see that he was already interested in the idea of education as well. And then lots of... Uh, um, articles about him and both positive and negative and so uh, but I just love the the words what is art why do it uh, who, uh, why do it so uh, this was the uh, beginning and an end then uh, number three was um, done by our assistant curator Kumakura Haruko and the Grace Sambo, the independent curator from the region. It was important for us to also collaborate with the, the younger generation curator or a collective from the region so that Mori Art, Art Museum as a bigger institution is harder to uh, travel the show or collaborate with a smaller, institu smaller institution. But by having this small scale exhibition, it made it possible to work like that. Then, uh, so number three was Fantasy World Supermarket, looking at the uh, important Indonesian new art movement, new movement in 1970s. And uh, so this Indonesia new art movement in the 1970s often said to have been marked the birth of contemporary art in Indonesia. And then uh, the movement was created in a group of mainly young artists, including FX Harsono and uh, now very important critic and uh, curator Jim Spankat, uh, free, uh, who freed themselves from the existing framework of Indonesian modern art based uh, predominantly on a Western context. So uh, they uh, started uh, also from the map and where, because in Indonesia there is a different uh, important cities in terms of the contemporary art, Jakarta, Bandung, Jogja. And so uh, to just give an idea of the overall, uh, overall image of the country. And then the timeline even started from uh, 1930s uh, through the uh, influence of uh, colonial time and then also 1940s when Japan was occupying uh, Indonesia for a few years and there was an art center called uh, Keimin Bunka Shidosho on several places in uh, Java Island and they were doing uh, the teaching performance art and poetry and ceramics so that sort of uh, remain as a threshold of uh, uh, practicing their own uh, the form of art, and then it continues um, 
Then uh, 1975 was the first uh, Indonesia Art Movement exhibition. So uh, this uh, exhibition was, this, this uh, MAM project was looking at the format of exhibitions and how uh, this whole group of new artists were uh, the curating or producing the exhibition themselves uh, to uh, convey this new idea of the form of art. So 75, 76, and 77, they continued exhibiting their works and inviting all these different artists. Then, um, but the, one of the most important uh, presentation that they did was from 1987 called the Fantasy World Supermarket and uh, the Project One. And that was more uh, going to in depth about uh, the criticizing of the consumerism and uh, mass production of all this new wave of the, so wave of the society that had been changing uh, the uh, lifestyle of the Indonesia at the time. So uh, the, the young curators curators recreated uh, what they are sort of uh, selling at the time or looking at uh, in this 87 exhibition by uh, reproducing all these products uh, from that time. But also they did uh, quite a lot of researches on uh, catalogs from that time and documentation and even visiting FX Harsono's studio and found finding loads of loads of the color slides from that time which uh, Harsono never look at, looked at. So it was also uh, it was important for younger generation to look over senior artists and then see uh, the scanning all these slides and uh, to be able to uh, be accessed by the wider audience. And then uh, what we are showing now as uh, mom research number four is on a video Hiroba. Hiroba is kind of like a playground, but uh, re-examining the 1970 experimental video art group. And uh, it's still on until next year, January 9th, but it's also very, very interesting, um, the movements, uh, curated by our curator Ken Kondo and in cooperation with uh, Nakaya Fujiko and Sakamoto Hirohumi. The Fujiko Nakaya is a very important uh, uh, the artists from that time in 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 terms of the uh, the development of video art, but the Video Hiroba was an experimental video art collective formed in Japan in 1972, and uh, members included uh, Nakaya Fujiko, Yamaguchi Katsuhiro, and Kawanaka Nobuhiro and Kobayashi Hakuto. All these younger artists were starting to uh, use this video camera or sort of tool as a video, and uh, but it's important. To know that the group's experiment also included uh, publishing magazines, uh, disseminating reports on their activities, and developing a discourse, renting out video cameras, which is very interesting because the camera was so expensive at the time. So they are kind of sharing the equipment uh, at low price, and even after the group uh, disbanded, the many of the members continue to work as an artist and strongly influenced the contemporary art scene. And so the, uh, this time, since the activity was not so long, the activity was from 1972 to uh, towards the 1975, so uh, three, four years. So there was no timeline, but more sort of uh, thematically uh, uh, arranged display. But you can see uh, different samples or examples of the uh, experimental video works that they made, but also how they used this new medium as video. Uh, not only, or oh, this is a short timeline, <laughs> and uh, but um, more or less by this uh, thematic alternative and uh, art spaces, then. Uh, the collaboration and uh, social intervention or sharing and copyright free, all these issues which, which could be still relevant now and uh, uh, when they were starting and thinking about the many different ways of using video. And some of the very interesting example is that, for instance, this one is a report that they used the video or video camera uh, from more sort of a journalistic point of view. So they were interviewing uh, the resident of a certain area when uh, they were going through the redevelopment of the real estate. So they were interviewing the people and then making a report and then submitting to the local uh, government office. So uh, they, their notion of the art or video was not only for the contemporary context, but more so that they spread it towards the, uh, the society itself. 
and uh, also uh, one thing I wanted to show. Yeah, this is uh, the last part was uh, about the Tokyo exhibition. So there was an exhibition uh, arguing about the the, the emerge the display of an emerging artist at the time. So Video Hiroba was, instead of participating in the exhibition as an artist, they were um, interviewing the, this discussion and discourse around this art community at the time. So they were more or less acting as a reporter of the whole events of discourse and then uh, final display and the opening ceremony and all sorts of uh, context. And then the exhibition was also is showing the camera that, that they were using at the time. So uh, yeah, this is just uh, um, a few examples of how we uh, are showing this mum research, but I found it very interesting experiment to look into some of the spot of the history of certain place or certain time in Asia and then talk about in depth. Then uh, I hope by accumulating all these example, then we can talk about Asia much better. And uh, it's actually easy to travel because a lot of um, digitized uh, material then you can share and then you can print out maybe a few original works. So if you are interested in trawling the show, please let me know. Thank you very much. <laughs>